Aureli Guerreri from Statadome, the uh, CMO. How are you? Good. How are you, Oliver? Yeah, good. Tired from uh, day three of Vegas, but uh, <laughs> 24 hours to go. But, and a short flight for you from San Francisco, right? Very short flight. Easy to come here for all the conferences. Yeah, and same time zone. So yes. uh, not a, not on the jet lag. Um but yeah, for for people that haven't heard of Data Dome, and I remember you saying in the uh, in our prep call for this that it's a, a very successful company that often people haven't heard of. Um, who are you guys? What do you do? So we're a cyber fraud protection platform. So what does this mean? Um, if you are an enterprise and you have digital assets, website, mobile apps, APIs, chances are um, that you need to protect them against fraud. And fraud can be account takeovers, credential stuffings. You all have seen in the last month or so all of the credentials that became available on the dark web. Mm -hmm. um, it could be scalping if you're selling something valuable, um, like Taylor Swift tickets. It was really hard to get those or the latest uh, sneakers. Um, or it could be even DDoS attacks that we thought were largely a solved problems but are becoming either more sophisticated than before. Mm. So the same way that you are using AI to make your life easier, the fraudsters are using AI and automation to make their life easier and we stop any kind of attacks before it um, causes any damages. So we stop fraud mm. before it happens. Yeah, just awesome. last Yeah, just as an example, just last year we stopped 350 billion uh, attempts so the scale of the problem is very um, significant for our customers. That that's like an unfathomable number as well. Um, are your clients, uh, well, prospect clients, fully aware of the scale of the risk there, or is that part of the educational piece in your sales process? So we um, have the luxury of having customers who are unfortunately very acutely in pain when they mm. come to us. Uh, what's happening is they have something in place that is just not working. Attacks have become so sophisticated that the typical ways of preventing them just don't cut it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I was mentioning um, DDoS attacks, and typically for a DDoS attack, you will use a WAF historically um, or even a CDN. Well, what we're seeing today is we're seeing DDoS attacks that um, use 40,000 different IPs most of them residential, so they look like your IP, like my IP, mm. you know, Verizon, AT&T IPs. Um, and they have loads of like two and a half million requests per second. So that goes through most of the systems that you have. Mm. Um, and so you, you know, when you're victims of that, obviously your website is under a lot of stress. Sometimes it goes off, you lose a lot of revenue, yeah, your customer satisfaction uh, goes down. And so you have acute pain that you need to solve. Mm. The level of sophistication is really uh, enabled by <laughs> AI. We see that. Um, I mean, I'm sure you hate CAPTCHAs as much as we do. Yep. Um, Especially you know, when they're awkwardly difficult. <laughs> they make you feel like you're failing an IQ test. Like yep. I tell you, like, I can't find all of those lights. Um, and I feel like a failure every time. But um, bots love them. Actually, bots are so much more efficient than us mm -hmm. at passing them. Um, there's uh, places called CAPTCHA farms where you can actually, if you're a fraudster, pay people to pass CAPTCHAs for you. And these, you know, typically used to be human beings in developing countries. And uh, you can actually see how much it costs to pass CAPTCHA. So very popular CAPTCHA service is Google ReCAPTCHA. Mm -hmm. um, and in 2018, um, it cost uh, 40 uh, cents. Uh, so sorry, it cost a dollar to pass uh, a thousand CAPTCHAs. Mm -hmm. And it took about 40 seconds, 40, 45 seconds to pass a CAPTCHA. When was that? 2018? 2018, so six yeah. years ago. Uh, today, that same service um, sells the same thousand CAPTCHA passes for 0.3 uh, dollars, and it takes um, less than nine seconds to go through. So bots are just more efficient than human beings at going through CAPTCHAs, it's actually trained on the same models, by the way. Mm, it's... Uh just made it more accessible to the to the adversary. Yes. And this year is an important year in in the states being election year. Yes. Um, what are you getting your customers to to see in in regards to election year and and uh, the kind of bot management space being critical? So you're 
talking about something that is critically important because if you cannot control and trust the behavior of your users um, on the on your websites, um, you cannot be sure that the information that is shared is proper uh, and accurate. And so when it comes to um, influence fraud, this is how we call this, there's a few ways it can happen. Uh, very simply, uh, it can be related to accounts being taken over. And as we you know, have seen in the news, this is happening at scale. But it could also be uh, comments uh, that, you know, tend to uh, lean one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, or it could be even LLMs can be misused, right? And there's prompt injection happening uh, in a very easy way with bots mm -hmm. today that are making the um, LLM just uh, render outcomes that were not planned for. So these are many, many different areas to look for. Uh, but definitely if you have a media site or if you have any kind of information uh, flow on your uh, property, you should be really careful. Mm -hmm. It's just scary to think how potentially easy it is to swing an election one way or another. And uh, even just from my YouTube shorts, the uh, very specifically cut bit of context you get from the uh the candidate speeches and uh completely out of context so yeah it's uh yeah a nervous nervous thought um and you've had a huge impact personally joining as uh as data dome cmo from a, an analyst perspective um what were the challenges there because i remember you saying how there wasn't a uh, a proper understanding by the business on how to interact with analysts. So what what have you done to 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 tackle that? So maybe like let's talk a little bit about what analysts are useful for in our space, right? Um, and I will start by saying that, yes, I am extremely proud that we are a leader in the Forrester Wave for mm -hmm. a category, but it's not just my effort, it's an entire team's effort. Um, and I think this is how it's important to understand the analyst relationship. Uh, the marketing team is really the steward of that relationship, mm -hmm. but everyone in the organization from product to strategy to technology to go to market interacts with analysts. And what are analysts doing? Well, they talk to your customers and particularly uh, when Data Dome, like Data Dome, you work with enterprise customers. Mm -hmm. uh, enterprise customers tend to rely on analysts to give them a market view, uh, where the market is going, what vendors to consider. And so when you are working with enterprises, understanding what analysts see um, in terms of uh, technology trends, in terms of needs from customers, and matching that with what you see, what you hear from your customers, is extremely important. Um, so when a wave comes in, it's a very thorough process. The analyst asks vendors dozens of questions as very specific uh, rating criteria. Uh, and there's also a lot of interviews and uh, the analyst talks to customers, your customers, other vendors' customers to really understand the market and understand how tools are working, not just, you know, in the honeymoon phase, but also after several mm -hmm. months, several years of use. So they have an amazing perspective and being able to engage with them on a regular basis and share ideas on where you're building your roadmap to, understand where um, they're, they are seeing the market needs, seeing if that matches what you're seeing as well. That's extremely valuable, but it takes a lot of effort and coordination. It doesn't happen organically because analysts are very busy. So you need to get into their schedule and also you need to be specific about what you're going to talk to them about. Mm -hmm. And your teams are very, very busy as well, right? So that cadencing and understanding how you play that back and forth and how you co-develop um, strategy is, is very, very um, important. It's um, obviously extremely helpful because it helps you understand how the analyst views the world and also helps them understand you know what your perspective is and when we have a you know tool that can which impact can be measured like ours like you know we have we live in a pretty clear world of are we stopping fraud or are we not right mm -hmm. and um the analyst really is trying to capture all the criteria to measure this um and uh the fact that we've ranked number one on this is a really big point of pride for us because that's what we um, are focusing our entire energies on is keeping our customers safe. Absolutely. And uh, 
maybe we'll make sure your competitors don't see this bit, but what, uh, what advice would you give to a security marketer who is trying to get recognized in a, in a wave? So I think, first of all, is figuring out what wave, because it's, it sounds mm -hmm. like a, a very simple problem, but for most security companies, it is not. There's a tendency in security companies to want to uh, create categories, invent new uh, ways to look at the world. Uh, but analysts have to simplify the world. They have to put mm -hmm. you in buckets. And so you have to figure out which bucket do you fit in. And if you're bringing a completely new way to solve an existing problem, that bucket might not exist just yet. So mm -hmm. the work might be working with the analyst to saying, do they agree with you that there needs to be a new category created? Um, so first of all, it's figuring out where you fit. I think that that is honestly a big battle for most cybersecurity marketers is really understanding uh, where do they belong. And then it is understanding um, the combination of what the product features that are needed and also what the vision and strategy that are needed to be successful um, and engaging with your analysts on this. They can be amazing help in terms of um, bouncing ideas, like roadmap ideas, go-to-market ideas, uh, feedback from customers. And they can even you can even get them to engage with your customers. So you can invite an analyst to a customer advisory board and have them have a conversation with your customers, talk about the trends they're seeing. So I think oftentimes the mistake that cybersecurity marketers make is to be passive and wait for the ranking moment mm -hmm. and just interact with the analyst at that point. Um, it is an effort, uh, but I think it is worth it because you derive a lot of value beyond the ranking documents. Yeah. Well, and you've uh, proven that you've executed it amazingly because you're you're the leader. <laughs> well, it's honestly, it's what we feel is due recognition based on all the enterprises that have chosen to work with us, right? So we mm -hmm. that that proof is really in the customers that we have, but it's great to get the recognition that goes with it because, as you mentioned, uh, we are the Fortune 500 best kept secret, and we want to change that. Absolutely, and you've also got exciting news this week about your. Uh, your own new product launch as well. So what's the uh, what's the highlights of, of the new product you bring into the market? So one of the things we committed to our analysts is to continue innovating at the same pace as we've been innovating and really creating a complete fraud platform where mm -hmm. our market started mostly in the bot mitigation space. We view it as much, much bigger. Um, and so in keeping with that idea, what we are launching this week is a product called Discover. And if you are trying to protect your website, mobile apps, and APIs, what you will realize is that it might be very hard for you to know exactly what your attack surface is. So as a customer of Datadome, do you not only protect what you know, but it, we also help you discover what you didn't know about and you need to protect. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And um, how, how do you kind of see the bot management space panning out over the years to come? Do you envisage uh, much more disruption in the category or what, what's your view on that? So the category itself, like many cybersecurity categories, is going to continue to be disrupted because mm -hmm. it is a cat and mouse game and it's always about being ahead of the threat actors. So um, there is not going to be a, a time where we can all rest and relax. That I know for sure. But what's really interesting that we've seen is that bot mitigation is at the center of a complete fraud prevention. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. We have a very large hotel chain that we work with. They had um, issues um, on their payment page, which you might think is really a fraud kind of issue. Um, what's happening today is if you're a fraudster, for about 20 bucks, you can get 200,000 credit card numbers that you find on the dark web, right? Most of them have been canceled, but may maybe not all. And what you do is you pay another $20, you get a bot as a service, and that bot submits all of these credit cards to a randomly chosen website to try and see which ones make it through. And once you find your two or three winning lottery numbers, then you go and buy yourself that Apple Vision Pro that you really wanted. So if you're that hotel chain, you are a victim of what's called card cracking. And so this attempt of, of testing which cards work or not. Um, your payment provider will stop these transactions, but every time they um, process the transaction, they charge you for it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a few cents, but it adds up very quickly. In the case of that payment provider, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars of declined payments, um, just the fees. And of course, your payment provider is really unhappy that you're loading them with all this junk. So by implementing us, they were able to reduce that 99%, and that mm -hmm. saved them $400,000 a year. Amazing. Um, so that's what we believe, that if you stop the fraud, even before it hits your application, then you really are fundamentally changing how fraud is being handled. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that at a lot of the most um, sophisticated customers that we have. They really start seeing fraud as a cybersecurity problem and the fraud teams are being folded under the cybersecurity teams even in some cases. Yeah, great. And uh, we're sat here, Black Hat 2024. You're a leader in the Forest of Wave. You've just announced a new product. What can people be excited for next at Datastone? A lot more new products. This, this fraud platform that I'm talking about um, has a lot of um, expansion. We um, can expand at the edge. We can expand in the app and protect even more of that business logic. So um, be becoming a one-stop shop for customers. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for coming on and really looking forward to seeing how you, the future pans out for Datastone. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Black Hat 2024 edition of Cyberbytes, the podcast. If you enjoyed it, then like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you're a candidate looking for your next role or a hiring manager looking for your next technical or go-to-market security hire, then reach out to us directly on info at asperonsearch.com.